when most teenagers have a Friday off of school, they sleep in, maybe get together with friends, or bum around the house in pajamas all day. When 15-year-old Alyssa Bustamante of Missouri had a Friday off from school, she spent the day digging two holes in the ground to be used as graves. Then she waited. Alyssa went on with life as usual. She went to school. She hung out with friends, all the while just waiting for the perfect opportunity to murder. That opportunity came just four days later, on October 21st, 2009, in the evening. When her neighbor, nine-year-old Elizabeth Alton, was walking home from her friend's house, Elizabeth was last seen at 6.15 p.m. when she left her friend's house to go home. Her house was only a few houses down. Elizabeth was never seen alive again. When she hadn't returned home, the family frantically began looking for her and called police to report her missing around 7 p.m. Her family, knowing she was afraid of the dark and would not have wandered off alone, grew increasingly worried. They knew that Elizabeth would not stay out after dark alone willingly, and they knew they needed to find her. What they didn't know was that it was already too late. Alyssa, seeing that she finally had the opportunity to kill, took it. She grabbed Elizabeth Alton, beat her, strangled her, and finally she stabbed her and slit her throat. She then dumped her body into one of the graves she had dug the week before in a nearby wooded area. Police searched vigilantly for the little girl, including the area where her body would eventually be found. But they found no trace of her. They pinged Elizabeth's cell phone, and though it showed the location as being the woods where the body lay, the police searched the area without locating her or her cell phone. In the end, after a letter led police to Alyssa, she confessed. It was Alyssa herself who had led the police to the grave where the body of the brutally slain girl lay. But why? The why in this case is really simple, yet really complicated and disturbing. The simple explanation given by Alyssa herself was that she wanted to know what it felt like to kill someone. The psychological implications of that statement are obvious. Normal, mentally stable people, even if they have ever wondered that question themselves, do not go and actually commit a murder in order to find out. What made Alyssa decide to actually satisfy her curiosity? That answer is a little more complicated. As usual, it was a case of hindsight. There were clues and warning signs that something was not right with Alyssa. Alyssa had shown signs of psychological problems in the past. She had attempted suicide numerous times, and she was on medication for depression. She had been given both inpatient and outpatient psychiatric care after her last suicide attempt. She was a cutter, someone who generally deals with emotional pain by cutting and inflicting physical pain on themselves or self-mutilating. Her best friend, when interviewed, claims Alyssa had once told her that she wondered what it would be like to kill someone. She had many online accounts but it was noted on her YouTube account in particular that she listed her hobbies as killing people and cutting. Her YouTube account also had what police considered some disturbing home movies, including one where she urges her brothers to touch an electrified cattle fence after doing so herself. Before the clip involving her brothers, Alyssa writes, That is where it gets good. This is where my brothers get hurt. In addition, neither of Alyssa's parents were around, and Alyssa was in the care of her grandparents. Alyssa was born to a teenage mother who has a criminal past for petty crimes, possession, 
Alyssa's father is in prison serving a ten-year sentence for assault. Alyssa was described as violent, depressed, and angry. None of these things are an excuse for murder. But we as a society have to question whether something should have been done for Alyssa before this happened. If someone had stepped in, could we have prevented this vicious murder from occurring? Police have speculated that the reason that Alyssa had not dug one but two graves was because she had planned to murder her two younger brothers, but had instead grabbed the opportunity to kill Elizabeth when it presented itself. They feel the YouTube video backs up this theory. She clearly took delight in inflicting pain on her brothers. While there has been no corroboration by Alyssa of this allegation, the question of why there were two graves dug is an interesting one. And we might never know the answer. Did Alyssa have different targets in mind for her crimes? Would she have killed again if she had not been caught the first time? Alyssa was arrested and charged with first-degree murder in the death of Elizabeth Alton. She appeared in court on November 17, 2009, where the judge ruled that she would be tried as an adult Despite her confession to the crime, as well as having led the police to Elizabeth's body, she has entered a plea of not guilty. She is being held without bond. While in custody, it has been reported that Alyssa has tried to harm herself by cutting herself with her own fingernails. It is said she has been exhibiting signs of anxiety and severe depression in jail and has been under suicide watch. Due to a motion filed by her lawyer, she has been remanded to a psychiatric institution to undergo evaluation and receive immediate psychiatric treatment. A trial start date of May 16, 2011 has been set for Alyssa Bustamante. There, she will stand trial charged as an adult with first-degree murder for the horrific slaying of her young neighbor, nine-year-old Elizabeth Alton. After previous issues that delayed the trial of Alyssa Bustamante, she was finally set to face the murder charges with a trial due to start January 30, 2012 instead. Alyssa pleaded guilty to the charge of second-degree murder and armed criminal action. There was an audible gasp heard in the courtroom when the now 18-year-old Alyssa admitted to taking a knife to the throat of Elizabeth Alton and slitting it, then strangling her with her bare hands afterward. Her defense team tried to offer a number of excuses for what caused Alyssa to perform this horrid, haunting act, including the fact that she was on the antidepressant Prozac as being a contributor, which she had begun taking in 2007 after a suicide attempt, and had started an increased dosage just two weeks prior to Elizabeth's murder. They recounted a family history of drug use, suicide attempts, and mental disorders, and said that her mother had abandoned her and her father was in prison to try to explain the mental state Alyssa was in when she brutally murdered Elizabeth Alton. Psychologists for the defense described Alyssa as psychologically damaged and severely emotionally disturbed. They testified that she suffers from major depression and also displays symptoms of borderline personality disorder, which is characterized by feelings of emptiness, instability of moods, inappropriate displays of anger, and poor impulse control though the details of Alyssa's mental stability were quite disturbing. She had previous suicide attempts, a history of self-harm including over 300 cuts on her body, as well as self-inflicted cigarette burn marks. The most disturbing and the most damning evidence presented was a journal entry that Alyssa made in her diary after the murder. She wrote, I strangled them and slit their th road and stabbed them. Now they're dead. I don't know how to feel. It was amazing. As soon as you get over the, oh my God, I can't do this feeling, it's pretty enjoyable. 
I'm kind of nervous and shaky, though, right now. Okay, I gotta go to church now. L-O-L. After days of very emotional testimony in the court, Alyssa broke down and cried for the first time in over two years of court proceedings. While the prosecution was making an impassioned plea for the judge to give her a life sentence, Alyssa, who had been staring at the floor impassively while the prosecution recounted her crime, broke down when grandparents got upset and stormed out of the courtroom. Alyssa's grandparents were not the only ones to have an emotional breakdown. After the judge's announcement that he would hand down a sentence the next day, the grandmother of the victim, Elizabeth Alton, yelled out, I think Alyssa should get out of jail the same day Elizabeth gets out of the grave. On February 8, 2012, Alyssa Bustamante gave a final statement before the judge handed down her sentence. If I could give my life to bring her back, I would. Alyssa addressed the court. While family members of her victim, nine-year-old Elizabeth Alton, wept, I just want to say I'm sorry for what happened. I'm so sorry. She was then sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole.